Juan Murga, a farmer from nearby Otusco, died a few hours ago. As you can see, the appearance of this body is a reflection of poverty. This disease mostly attacks poor people, people who live in economically depressed areas away from the cities. In those areas, regretfully, there is no potable water. The local and departmental authorities, and the international ones, should see this and remember these people that are always left out. And they should try to implement rural sanitation measures in these farming communities, because we are suffering. How come in just 15 days it is spread all over the department of Cajamarca? Why? And why were all these patients here in the first phase, during the great crisis? Why were they all malnourished field hands? Poverty, misery, lack of food, makes this disease surge. How come it travels to this place? And that? Poverty and hunger, low salaries. That's my theory. In Otusco, we've had two people die. Now we have another body. And we are driving to Otusco, to the cemetery, where we are going to bury the body because, according to the authorities, persons who die of cholera should be buried immediately. In the region of Cajamarca, lengthy wakes traditionally precede burial. For three days, friends and family gather around the deceased. They eat, drink, and grieve together. In an environment with minimal sanitary conditions, close contact with the infection promotes further transmission. Today, tradition must be broken. Cholera has claimed many victims in this community. There may be many more to come. Juan Murga must be buried immediately. Ironically, drinking water is a luxury only a few can afford in this town built on the river. Here, the prevailing sanitary conditions are a breeding ground for cholera. The majority of the residents have no alternative but to build their own latrines and dump their waste into the water. The same water they use to drink, bathe, wash clothes and fish.
To compound the problem, the untreated sewage of nearby Iquitos, a city of almost half a million, is discharged directly into these same waters. Cholera is a disease with social undertones. That means we have to emphasize the fact that we have problems with sanitation. As long as there are no solutions to the problems of water supply or basic sanitation services, there exists a very strong possibility that cholera will remain as an endemic disease in this entire region. The last cholera epidemic in South America occurred in 1895. This most recent epidemic is the seventh one registered in world history. It started in Indonesia in 1961, rapidly advancing throughout Asia, reaching Africa in 1971. Two decades later, it hit the coastline of Peru. With the prevailing conditions in Peru, it was impossible to prevent the cholera epidemics. We knew that it could reach the continent, as well as the country, at any time, but we couldn't determine when it was going to happen. The environmental conditions of the country, especially the quality of potable water and the problems of human and solid wastes, were ideal for cholera to overtake Peru. At the beginning, the disease was not recognized. It had been a hundred years since a case of cholera had been seen on the continent. It was essential that laboratory analysis confirm the first suspected cases. Next, scientists identified the specific characteristics of transmission. Only then could society effectively combat the disease. Maria Delgado is brought to the hospital at dawn. She lives in a neighborhood where there are no telephones, nor social services, not even a chance of transportation after dark. Last night, she experienced diarrhea, vomiting, and cramps. But her children had to wait until daylight to be able to get a taxi. When she is finally admitted, she is in shock. Her blood pressure is extremely low, and her pulse barely perceptible. If not treated immediately, people in this critical condition may lose up to two liters of water an hour, become dehydrated, comatose, and die. Patients like Mrs. Delgado, who are in shock and unable to drink, require treatment with an intravenous solution. The mortality rate for hospitalized cases is less than 1%. Maria Delgado was fortunate. She will receive proper medical care in time. Cholera is a greater threat for those who live in remote rural areas. This family shows symptoms of the disease.
one of their neighbors, Carlos Perez, has been trained as a health promoter for his community. Here, diarrhea is common. Carlos is accustomed to treating the dehydration caused by diarrhea with oral solutions. Cholera-induced dehydration responds well to the same treatment. Mixed with water, the oral rehydration salts in this package help replenish liquids lost by vomiting and diarrhea. Eighty to ninety percent of people infected by cholera can be treated by this method alone. The cholera bacteria enter the body through the mouth, mostly by drinking contaminated water or eating uncooked contaminated food. The lack of personal hygiene and environmental sanitation creates an almost endless chain of contagion. Often, sewage containing cholera and other diseases is discharged directly into the rivers and sea, contaminating fish and seafood. In many cases, this untreated water is used for farming, where it can contaminate crops. Food contamination also can occur in the marketplace especially in conditions such as these. Or it can fester in portable food stands if hygienic measures are not taken during food handling and preparation. The great majority of diarrheal diseases in Latin America are due to poor environmental health and the lack of clean drinking water. Today, the cholera epidemic has spread beyond political borders, putting many countries at risk. The first step in controlling any epidemic is to acknowledge its existence and magnitude. Unfortunately, some countries have delayed reporting all cholera cases because they fear restrictions on travelers and commerce. However, timely reports facilitate international collaboration in dealing with many issues, including this epidemic. The experience with the cholera epidemic has magnified the harsh realities that face a majority of Latin Americans. Final control of cholera and other serious problems will come only when each country provides its people with the basic acceptable standards of safe drinking water and sanitation. An investment in a country's health is an investment in its development.